Jobs, as you know, you're the uh, fat cat uh, developer, and uh, you know the book on you is that you throw little old ladies who can't afford their rent out of the apartment. Uh, I don't think that's the book on me, if you want to know. Well, I, mean, I think I don't think it is at all. I think probably it's just the opposite. Uh, we have very wealthy people in this particular building. We have a building on 100 Central Park South, the best, probably the best piece of real estate in New York in the world. And we have very wealthy people, extremely wealthy people living in this building. Well, we have it's second not, homes. It's not quite accurate to say that every occupant is an extremely wealthy person. No, but person. the ones that were complaining were the wealthy ones. The ones right. that were complaining, Phil, were the wealthy ones. All These right. are people with uh, a lot of money. One of them owns a brownstone, a number of brownstones on East 66th Street, and yet she's living in this building for a rent-controlled rent. The rent-controlled people, the people that need rent control, they're not the ones that are protected. It's people that are usually wealthy with a lot of influence that have the connections to get a rent control apartment. People that might need it, they don't have rent control apartments. <laughs> well, I, that's a little facile. I mean, it's, that's a little bit like saying, uh, you know, those I'm, people I'm, are out of work because they're lazy. No, it's, it's I not, think it it's may be. Or, well, well, first of all, let's, let's, the, uh, the building on Central Park South has been settled. You own it, and you've, you've made your deal with all the residents. It's, we're very uh, happy with Score one for you. Uh, very happy. Uh, uh, back to this, uh, this lawsuit. So you hire uh, Roy Cohn, and he goes to work, and you win it. Uh, uh, Cohn doesn't like lawyers either because they s always want to settle, and you don't like that about lawyers. The idea of settling drove me crazy. The fact was that we did rent to blacks in our buildings. What we didn't do was rent to welfare cases, white or black. I'd watched what happened when the government came after Samuel Lefrac, another builder, and he caved in and started taking welfare cases. They virtually ruined his buildings. Um, welfare cases ruined his buildings. Isn't that... I, aren't you pretty this close here to, yeah, uh, no, to looking no, no. like an insensitive guy uh, from atop your Trump Tower looking down on the Walman rink over the vast holdings of your own empire? Shouldn't we have just a little more understanding from Absolutely. a man of your influence and wealth on the issue of making New York livable for all of us, safety on the subway, absolutely. these if that absolutely. If the answer is absolutely, then we can't continue to give you guys these big tax breaks. And that would go for General Electric and NBC, too. You tell us in your own book that you would make money. Uh, in, on the Trump Tower in, in New York but when everybody without else is the tax it. break. So when everybody else in the city gets it but Donald Trump, when Koch and the administration tries to stop Donald Trump, and I don't say give me the tax breaks, I say don't give everyone else the tax breaks. If every other building being built in New York City is entitled to a residential tax abatement and Trump Tower goes, and I'm not entitled, I'm the only building in the city of New York that's not entitled, I don't think that's a problem. But look at the look at the location of your building. What, what difference does it make? There what are other wonderful locations. Different. Phil, there are other wonderful locations also that are also getting tax abatements. I won the case. They didn't give it to me. It took me two and a half years in court. I won it seven to nothing in three different courts, and I'm very happy about it. I didn't win it because I so much needed it as much as because on a moral principle I was entitled to it. If nobody's going to get it, I'm satisfied. If everybody's going to get it, I shouldn't be the only one that's not getting it, Phil. And I know you well enough to know that you wouldn't take it either. If you were in my position, you wouldn't take that. So, that's what happened. <laughs> hey, let's hear it for the rich folk. Uh, but you tell us also in your book, you left Queens and you left Brooklyn for Manhattan to, uh, to get away from rent control. You're, you're honest to tell us in no, this I'm book. I'm honest. Hey, I'm not running for anything, Phil. I'm not running for office. I don't have to lie in a book. I want to tell the facts, okay? <laughs> but, rent, I mean, do you, want me to, do you want me to say little fibs and little this and well, little that and how much we all love rent control and what a great thing it's been for New York? It's been a disaster for New York. It's badly hurt New York. It's crippled New York. It's made yeah. it impossible for a lot of people to live in New York. And, and you see what's happening. You look at the Bronx. You look at certain parts of Queens and Brooklyn. You see what rent control's done. And I'm, I think you know it as well as anybody else. Rent control, and I'm one of the few developers in the world that would ever say it, some forms of rent control are sometimes necessary to protect the elderly, to protect people that truly don't have the money. But when you have multimillionaires, and not all instances of this, Phil, there's not all instances, but you go to Manhattan, the prime sections of Manhattan, where you have rent control and rent stabilization all over. Those are wealthy people in many instances, and I don't mean in every instance, Phil, but I mean in many, and I would say in a majority. You have multi-millionaires in some cases living in apartments for $200, $300, and $500 a month that should be paying many times. This is going to sound a little unusual, but New York rents can be ten dollars and $20,000 a month. What does that mean? What does that mean, Phil? 
that means that the city can't tax because if a wealthy person's paying $300 a month, you can't really tax that beyond a certain point, 20% of that or whatever it might be. So the city's always short of funds. It's a joke what's happened. And the people that need rent control, and there are some indeed, those aren't the people that have it. It's the people with the connections. Somebody knows Trump. Somebody knows somebody else. They call up. They say, do me a favor. That's yep. what it's all but about. If, if, uh, we, with this, this audience wants to get in here. Mr. Trump, sir, if your position is, uh, let's, let's, let's grant a given. No doubt about it. Under rent control circumstances, there's, there are going to be certain people who don't need it who get it. Not unlike Social Security. There are going to be some people who get it who don't need it. But to suggest that, that rent control is somehow being pervasively abused well, throughout the island of Manhattan by people doubt? who don't need it, I do have plenty of doubt. Uh, well, you ought to check the numbers, Phil. I mean, I can tell you right. something. Now, one, one little thing. All I'm asking for is a simple thing. Give a means test. If a person makes $150,000 a year working in a big advertising agency, if a person makes two hundred, three hundred, a hundred thousand, seventy-five thousand dollars a year, right. let there be a means test right. so that that person will give the apartment to somebody that can afford it if you have to do that, Phil. Let the, why can't there be a means test? Well, why should multimillionaires live for three or four hundred dollars a month mm -hmm. when poor people are paying yeah. more than that and, and have to pay more? And how many that? people would have to work in the office to determine whether or not people are of means or not of means? And would you build the building? It would be a very large one occupied by thousands of bureaucrats trying to figure out who does and who doesn't. You, you wouldn't, uh, it you wouldn't isn't that, that simple just to... And, and what you about know the, the kind of money you're talking about? If you emptied and made available to people that, could that, that need, really, this protection. The apartments occupied by very wealthy people. In New York, you're talking about tremendous amounts of money. And I mean, if you're talking about a number of accountants in order to administrate okay. a program, you're not talking about a lot relative to what we're talking about. Okay. You should not have called Mayor Concha a moron. That was not good public relations. <clears throat> hey, what can I do? Well, doesn't it, isn't this, aren't you a little... Don't you want to take this back I don't think that's all? bad public relations. No, I don't take it back. When it comes to running the city, he's about as bad as anybody I've seen. Ed Koch has been a disaster for New York. People that live in New York understand it. Taxes have gone through the roof. Everything's gone through. You have, whether it's a Wallman rink or a subway system, whether it's a school that comes in and takes eight Excuse or nine years. Excuse me, but here are you. You're out with your folks at City Hall getting your picture yeah, taken. Was well, it, was the good right. old days? Well, I guess you like me in those days. <clears throat> no, I just think that, uh, and, and this is, and I don't think you have to be uh, passionately committed to City Hall or anybody to, s to conclude that uh, this kind of language from someone of your power and influence is not good style. Phil, from my standpoint, it doesn't really matter. Again, I'm not running for office. If the point is made better by saying that, let the point be made. He's done a lousy job as the mayor. Anybody from New York probably understands it and knows it. It's, yes. it's gone down now, and it's going down as the mo most corrupt. Hey, Phil. This is the most corrupt administration in the history they of the city. They have their problem. I happen to agree with your assessment of Mayor Koch in New York City. What do you think will finally have to happen to bring his downfall? Well, I, I have a feeling, and maybe it's more of a prediction. I think that the incompetence and corruption of the Koch administration will eventually lead to his resignation or his just having to be forced out because uh, I think he's that bad. And as Phil says, I don't like mincing words because what difference does it make? Again, I'm not running for office, so it doesn't matter. I can stand up here and unlike a lot of people that I watch, I can say what I think. But uh, that's much of a prediction. I believe that the incompetence and corruption will ultimately lead to his having to get out. When I see a total ripoff of this country by Japan, where they literally have no defense budget, where we have to borrow money from them in order to get them oil and defend the Persian Gulf, where most of the oil goes to Japan and other countries, not us. We get 4% of our oil. When I see Kuwait, a total ripoff, we're bringing the Bridgeton. You remember the Bridgeton? Their oil minister sat back and he laughed at how much money he's going to make. Why aren't we getting some of that money? Why aren't we getting it? They're taking in billions and billions of dollars. And we can't even land a helicopter on Kuwaiti soil. You tell me that's right. Saudi Arabia, they wouldn't even be there except for us. And in Saudi Arabia, we couldn't even use their minesweepers, Phil. You know it. We said, could we use your minesweepers? Ours are old, outdated, not worth a damn. They said, no, you can't use our minesweepers to protect the Persian Gulf. I mean, it's a disgrace. What's well, going on? On his enemies. If, I, if people screw me, I screw, it, I screw back in spades. I mean, is there something wrong with that? Uh, tell me. Phil, um, is there something wrong with that? Well, a confrontational kind of, I'll get you used. You keep saying you're not running for office, but why don't you? Run for mayor of New York. 
No, I wouldn't want to run for mayor of New York. Uh, I'd like to see somebody talented do that, and there's a tremendous potential in New York. New York is the great city. It's one of the great places of the world, but I really have no intention of running for mayor. Thank